Let's go right to the Islanders, and especially since Mr. LaRocco down there should be happy because they are back to NHL 500, 7 2 and 1 in their last 10. Uh, I put this in quotes. The Islanders right now sit in last place in the Metro, but they've also played six less games than the Flyers and the Devils. Uh, their goal differential, Anthony, is getting down to zero, and that's a good thing. Um, and their next seven games, three of them are at home uh, versus playoff teams. All seven are at home. So, yeah, you know what? Um, it's it's funny. Like I, I think one of the great things one of the great things about our game and sports in general is you know sometimes you could you could just have you could just have a good team that runs into a, a bad patch for a host of many host of reasons. Um, it may, in this instance, it may cost me, but I, I you know I still like. Um, our sport and how this stuff could happen. But, you know, listen, the Islanders, we all know what they faced at the beginning of the year, the 13-game road trip, the stop, the stops and starts. COVID ravaged their team right before the first ever game at UBS, the Pollock injury, the Nelson injury. Um, you know, I think we all know that they are at the root of it, the Islanders are a good team. You know, I always reference Dan, Dan Rosen said it himself when he was on our show before the season. He even said that he sees no holes in this Islander team. A lot of team, a lot of people predict them to go very far. Um, so maybe this is them becoming that team again. You know, um, six one and one in the last eight is not some nothing to sneeze at. Mark, you worth the record in the last ten. It's all very good. Um, you know, I, I think that they're on the right path. They're healthy, minus Ryan Pollock, who should be returning. I would say in the next, hopefully, the next two weeks. Uh, and Kyle Palmieri, who you know hadn't been playing particularly well anyway, but they're healthy. Um, you know, I think they're feeling good about themselves. And, you know, they're playing more more Islander hockey. And um, listen, 14 points, it is a big hole. Um, however, it's honestly not insurmountable. I mean, my personal opinion, I, I think that it might be a little too late at the end of the day. They might fall short by a couple points. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. We'll have to see. But they're on a good streak right now. And the next, what, eight of nine are at home. Um, mm -hmm. They got a, a team against a bad Arizona team on Friday. Uh, after a hard start at UBS Arena, they're five zero and one in their last six at home, and they're going to be playing a lot at home. So, um, you know that plays their advantage. And then the game's in hand. So, listen, you never know, but they're playing good hockey. Um, and you know, for an Islander fan, this is probably the best part of the season that we've had so far. Phil, uh, yeah, I mean it's a good stretch for them, um, but they. I look at that that seven two and one in their last ten, and I look at the strength of their schedule, and it it's pretty weak. I mean, it, 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 look at it. Their their last ten games have been the Devils, which they won four to two, the Red Wings two to one, the Bruins uh, they, they they lost to the Red Wings two to one. Sorry, uh, they beat the Bruins three to one. Okay, good team, good team. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights, good team. They lost in a shootout. They beat the Sabres, garbage, 4-1. to one. They beat the Oilers in overtime, 3-2. to two. But, again, they're not a good team right now on New Year's Day. Then they beat the Devils, 3-2. to two. Not a good team. Another garbage team. They lost to the Capitals, got shut out 2 nothing. They beat the Flyers, 4-1, like they should. And then it took them to a shootout yesterday to beat the Flyers. So, I mean, and their game's coming up after this. Coyotes, bad. Leafs, good. Flyers, bad. Kings, pretty good. Uh, Kraken, bad. Wild, good. Senators, bad. Sharks, pretty good. Kings, pretty good. Ducks, pretty good. Avalanche. That West Coast trip is really going to be a litmus test for, for, me, for the Islanders. So while they they may be back and they were never as bad as their record indicated, I still think that their their weak strength of schedule definitely helped them out in their last 10. So you're like I said, when that West Coast trip comes around, you're really going to see what that team is made of. So... I mean, their best players are got to start playing like their best. How Palmieri needs to be better. Um, Ilya Sorokin was never the problem. He was always really good for them. It just they played like crap in front of him for the most part. Uh, I need more out of Matt Barzell. Uh, Brock Nelson needs to start scoring like he was scoring at the beginning of the year again. I mean, he was he was a house of fire earlier on. Anthony Beauvillier has kind of been disappointing for me. Um, I haven't seen that. Oliver Wallstrom shown you flashes, but then he's kind of gone back to you know where he was before. But I'm I'm not gonna blame that on Wallstrom. I'm gonna blame part of that on Barry Trotz. 
and his mishandling of him. I don't like the way he's handled off of Wallstrom. I don't get how you waited until, what, the ninth round of a shootout to shoot him when he's the best pure shooter on your team? Makes absolutely no sense. So, um, yeah, I still think they have their host of problems to deal with. I, I still think it's a long way to go for them. But they're not as bad as this record, and they're, they're standing, the place in the standings would indicate yeah, uh, but you know what? You got to beat the teams that are on your schedule, and that's the way they're going to get back into it. You were saying it before about the West Coast swing and uh, how that could be even more devastating if they decide to throw the, the four Canadian games or over there because that, that could be even worse. The league, the, league announced, the league announced the rescheduled games for the, the February when they were supposed to be in the Olympic break, so that was just announced. The Islanders are going to Western Canada – I think starting February 9th, they're going out to play those games. Okay, so that's it's February 9th, and uh, yeah, you know I'm sorry because it just announced it just yep. before, so I don't have these up. What are, what are they? And can you? Uh, can I gotta you take a second glance too. It's it's early February. They're going out to Western Canada. Okay, and then are they coming back and then back out again? I have to really examine it. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see. All right. Oh, All right here. Uh, yeah. the ninth, By the, the way, 11th. great shirt, Philk. Sean just pointed it out, so I, I just had to uh, I had to give him his uh, after, or, or his confirmation and his uh, re- positive reinforcement because he saw that. So. Arguably their best album, but it could be either that uh, Master of Puppets. Anthony, what do you got? They they come back. They play Buffalo at Buffalo, and then they come home. And then they come home. Yeah. All right. So they're doing it's two different trips, right? Yeah. I mean, either way, that's still going to be brutal on them. Uh, but Matt Barzell is back and he's working 12 games, a uh, 12 goal. Uh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. 12 games. He's over a point a game, as you always want to point out, Phil. And that's a good thing. Robin Salo uh, got it. And then, by the way, yes, like uh, Master, I would say, is their best album, if you press me. But um, Robin Salo. Been producing for them. Scored his first goal in the NHL last night. And this is a quote that he had. It feels good to play. It's a tough league. And he's just trying to get better and build some confidence. So the question, and but Anthony was so chomping at the bit, I never even got to ask, would be, are the Islanders making a run at making the playoffs right now? Which, well, that's, the, bad, the, that's terrible writing, by the way. You shouldn't put the, <laughs> the same word. To, yeah. Is that what you were about to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, um, yeah, that's terrible. That's awful. That's just. Uh, it's done. I'm a good guy. All right, there we go. Are the Islanders having a run making the playoffs? By the way, um, you know what? You got to you got to beat these teams. You got to get some momentum, and you got to close the gap to the Bruins because that's the team I think that the Islanders have a shot at at catching, and uh, there there are some good teams in the east right now so it, it's still possible that they could do it okay. they got a very heavy backloaded uh schedule as most teams do but the islanders even more they played the fewest amount of games in the league so uh if they want to do it that's it, the time is now you, it's 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 that simple well yeah in, in order to do it they're gonna have to play at the at the rate that they're playing right now like they're stretched there on now, then they need to keep that going. Um, but listen, the, the players in the locker room are different than you know us of the media fans. They just take it one game at a time. I, I think they probably don't even look at the standings and see, okay, well, well we're fourteen behind Boston. I just think their their headspace now is just to be go out and try to win every game, and then you let the chips fall where they where they fall. Um, they just have to focus on a single game. They can't look too far ahead because then it could, the big picture could be overwhelming. But um, listen, if they just keep winning hockey games, um, that's all they could do. And, you know, like I said, if Boston falters, that that makes their lives easier. Um, but they just have to focus on them. They can't really worry about anybody else right now. Um, and if they play this this level of hockey, um, you know, who knows? Like I said, it's, it's going to be tough, but at least they're going to give themselves a fighting chance if they play like this. If they play 500 hockey, not going to be so much. But if they could c- continue winning at this rate, um, you know, I think they can at least make it close. So, um, Tuka Rask again, plays more games like he did last night. The Islanders have a good shot. Who? Tuka Rask. Rask. Oh, yeah. Well, Carolina <laughs> absolutely killed them, but that's another story. 
And it's also after ceremonies and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I don't know. Not to get too Boston, but Rask is older and he hasn't played. He's coming off surgery. I don't know how effective he's going to be going forward. But um, listen, again, um, as far as the Islanders go, just got to keep winning hockey games. It's plain and simple. Um, but they have the team. They have the team in the locker room. They weren't, you know, they weren't picked to possibly be, be a Stanley Cup finalist for, for no reason. Um, nothing's changed. So if they could just keep playing like this, and this is the real team, we'll see what happens. Phil? The one good thing that I think that they have going for them, considering their problems on defense, is the fact that now you have – uh, Noah Dobson emerging as a uh, as a real credible defenseman. He looks like he's a legitimate top four defenseman right now, and they've needed that. Um, they still need another defender or two. Uh, Robin Salo getting his first goal was was good for him. I thought he's been pretty good for when he's uh, you know for coming and in, stepping into the lineup in this situation and having to try to help pick up the pieces of a team that. Really got off to a bad, bad start, but um, I will say that Noah Dobson's really been one of the big heroes for that team so far. Uh, they they need more out of, like I said, they need more out of Oliver Wallstrom. But again, I'm not going to kill him for it as much as I want to get on Barry Trotz and the way that he is with young players. Uh, I, I need more out of Josh Bailey. Josh Bailey, to me, has not done nearly enough for that team. And he scored uh, a goal probably, last night. He scored a goal last night, yeah, but he, he needs to do more. Kyle Palmieri has been Mr. Invisibility for that team. Uh, if he was a part of the Fantastic Four, he would be the Invisible Man, not the Invisible Woman. But um, you need more out of him. Matt Barzell has, has had his peaks and valleys, and he, uh, he needs to start being more towards the peaks. Uh, I, I just There are a lot of guys who have contributed here and there, but – they need to start firing on all cylinders consistently. They've done a little more of that lately, but I, I just wonder how sustainable a near 800 winning percentage is for the rest of the season. I, I think yeah, that's, that's where the tough part is going to come in because the, they're going to have to have over a, a 780 winning percentage if everybody stays on their pace. But you know what? As Anthony pointed out, the regular season, it's the regular season for a reason because – nobody's going to – everybody's going to have peaks of values. Nobody's going to be on this, um, this Xbox level of, of production. By the way, when we did the New Year's resolutions, I said the Islanders had to get younger. They had to get faster. That's what they've been doing. They've got uh, Bellows and Wallstrom. They're playing a lot more, and it's uh, – with Salo in the lineup, it's – it's and it's right now it's working. If they can keep that going, there you go. But – Two pe- one piece of news, and also to say what the temperament of the team could be. One is Adam Pellick made the All Star game, so I want your thought on that real quick, Anthony. The fam- finally getting recognition. I mean, it's really nice to see him get that recognition. Um, you know, he's not an offensive defenseman at all, um, so I-, I was I was surprised he was their representative. Like, listen, I know I know Barzell's numbers aren't eye popping, but I mean. He's kind of what you want in an all-star game skills competition because he's got the flash. He's got that skill. So I figured they would have, you know, they would have sent him. Um, they would have sent him anyway. Uh, but I don't you know. I don't know. So I was I was surprised by it. Um, but, you know, good for Adam Pellick. You know, I think he's a, he's a fantastic defenseman. He's one of the best shutdown defensemen in the league. Um, and it's nice to see him get the recognition. So um, good good on him. And there was also a, a pretty funny moment that happened this week, and Anthony pointed it out to me. It was that this happened, sort of like the worst translation ever. Ily, I believe you've won uh, your last three starts here. Just how comfortable are you feeling uh, in between the pipes? Thank you. In between the, the net. How comfortable are you in the net? Good. Comfortable, yeah. Uh, they have... Um, uh, good uh, transition. Uh, uh, play one game me, one game game Wiley, and uh, have a good uh, tonos like, and uh, feel good. Like they translated English to English right there for him. 
So hopefully that's just how, how loose the team is and maybe it'll even carry on. By the way, if anybody is going to be at the Islander game this week, I will actually be at the Islander game this week. And my hockey team has a game afterwards. Feel free to watch and uh, be like, where's Mark? No, he's on the bench. All right, that's where he is. So um, there's a chance you might even see Mr. LaRocco as well. So what do you think of the Islanders actually making a playoff push? Guys, throw it all down in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe as well. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.